Years ago, I was working nights as a phlebotomist, the person who draws your blood, in a hospital. There was this doctor who was notorious for ordering recurrent tests incorrectly. He would order a single draw when he really needed a serial draw 90% of the time. But because one in 10 times he really did want a single, you always had to check with him. This night happened to be the start of daylight savings. So at 1.59 a.m., the clocks would turn to 3 a.m. instead of two. At about 1.30, I get an order on my screen from this doctor. I was the only phleb on nights and I worked with two techs. I sighed and showed them. Oh look, Dr. X ordered this test again. I'll see if he's on the floor and if he really wants this or if he wants the serial draw. I went up to the floor and he was at the nurse's station. I remember it so clearly because he was wearing plaid black and yellow skinny pants under his white coat. I couldn't stand the guy and I thought his loud ugly pants just drew attention to his loud ugly personality. I walked up to him and said, hey, I just got this order for XYZ patient. Did you mean to order the three serial draws? He was dismissive and said something like, of course I did, can you just draw three? I, of course, cannot just come poke a patient three different times without orders. So I asked him if he could reorder it and I would go back to the lab to print the stickers and come right back and do the first draw. I drew a couple of patients quickly knowing that he would take a few minutes to get the order in. I rode the elevator back to the lab and checked my computer. It was 1.58 and the orders were there so I printed them and stuck my specimens in the centrifuge while they printed. I pulled the labels off the printer and looked closely and realized that he had ordered the single draw yet again. I pulled up the order code, wrote it down for him, and went back to the floor to just ask him to do this order exactly. When I got to the floor, he was standing exactly where he had been when I came up the first time, wearing plain black pants. I assumed somebody had forced him to change, and I knew he was going to be really annoyed when I asked him to reorder the labs. By now, it was definitely past 1.59, so the clocks were reading three-something. I asked him if he could reorder the test. He was totally pleasant and not at all frustrated that I was asking him again. I asked him if room 2008 had thrown up on him or something, and if that's why he had changed his clothes. He then seemed offended and was like, what are you talking about? I was like, sorry to offend, but when I came up to you earlier, you had on yellow pants, so I just assumed something happened. He scoffed at me and said, I've been wearing these all night. I don't own yellow pants. You must be confused. I'm thinking he's just being weird and should just admit he got puked on, but whatever. I go back to the lab, print the orders, and finally draw the patient. I stop to talk to one of the nurses for a moment, and on my way back down, she says something like, I saw you talking to Dr. X. He's being weird tonight, right? And she seemed kind of shaken. I said, yeah, he was wearing those hideous pants and then tried to pretend he wasn't. She told me that he walked into a room on one side of the wing wearing the yellow pants right before the time change, and then walked out seconds later from the other side of the wing, wearing black. I was weirded out and went back down to the lab where the techs asked me where the samples were for the patients that I had drawn after first asking Dr. X to reorder. I opened the centrifuge I had left them in and they weren't there. The orders showed that the labels had never been printed and when I apologetically went to redraw the patients, they had no idea who I was and didn't have cotton or tape on their arm from where I'd drawn them earlier. I still have absolutely no explanation for this. It appears that everything between first receiving the incorrect order and returning to ask him to reorder for the second time never happened. The text didn't remember me showing them that he had ordered incorrectly the first time or anything. The only reason I didn't check into a psychiatric facility was the nurse who corroborated my story. 
We hardly knew each other at the time, but we like trauma bonded over the experience and we've talked about it so many times. The weirdest part to me is that it coincided with daylight saving starting. That is completely a societal construct. Nothing actually happens when we move the clock, so what the heck? I still get the chills when I think or talk about it. And because people always question why I was so tuned into the clocks and to know exactly when things happened, I was a worker whose shift was an hour shorter that night. We all kind of watch the clock and do a mini celebration when it changes. This isn't exactly a horrifying story, so don't get too disappointed if you're not terrified. For background, I'm a 15-year-old Irish fella called Ross. I go to school in Ireland, and I'm now in third year. At the start of the second year, I knew a fella that joined the school. I was in charge of showing him around, and we've been good friends ever since. He is Portuguese, and his name is Tiago. I'll call him Tig for the story. His school bag is a fairly small, bright red bag. He's a little bit shorter than me, and his hair is quite short and brown in color. One day, I was upstairs in my school. It was break time, and I was going to my group's usual spot. I turned a corner, and I saw Tig walking along the hallway. This was weird, because at the distance I was from him, I would have seen him come up the stairs. I didn't think much of it at the time, but I sped up to catch up to him. There was another corner coming up. He rounded it, and I followed suit. Except he wasn't there. There was a staircase going back down and two bathrooms, one for lads and one for lassies, but no Tig. Considering how close behind him I was, he would have had to have sprinted towards and then jumped down the stairs or jogged into one of the bathrooms. If he went for the stairs, I would have heard it, so I figured he was in the bathroom. I sat at the bench and waited. Tig was the first other person in our group to arrive, he rounded the corner and sat his bag down. The realization hit me hard. He wasn't in the bathroom, and whatever or whoever I had followed was not Tig, even though it looked just like him. Same backpack and everything. I asked him if he had already been up there, to which he replied he hadn't. He had no reason to lie. Now, I know what you're thinking. It was someone else. First of all, the person that I saw looked the exact same as my friend from the back. Second of all, no one else in the school has that bag. At least I've never seen anyone else with it. And third, the only place the person could have gone without sprinting down the stairs, which I probably would have caught a glimpse of anyway, would be the bathroom. No one ever came out of the bathroom. At least nobody that I didn't watch go into it. Finally, my friend is a fairly distinct character. Not many people have the same body build as he does. Like I said at the start, it's not exactly terrifying, but I do believe it to be a glitch in the Matrix. This wasn't anything mind-blowing, but it happened to me earlier today, and it made me so confused. I live in an apartment building, and the ground level is like a communal public space. I was taking the lift down from my apartment level to this ground level to exit the place in the morning. The lift doors have transparent panels, so you can look out of the lift. And because of how lifts usually slow down when they're reaching the destination floor, and the doors sometimes take a few seconds to open. I had a good 10 seconds to look at what was happening at the public space in the ground floor. From what I saw, there were three men mopping the floor, and one old lady, who I know is my neighbor, was walking across the space in front of these three men. But when I was in the lift, I noticed that all four of them were frozen. But it was weird because they weren't just standing in casual positions. The men looked like they had just frozen as they were mopping, 
and the old lady was literally mid-stride. I spent a good three or four seconds wondering what was going on as I waited for the lift doors to open. But the moment the lift doors opened and I stepped out, everyone started moving. The men went back to mopping the floor and the lady continued walking again. It was so odd though, because it literally looked as though somebody had pressed play on them when I stepped out of the lift. It was so weird to me. I have no idea what happened. This happened two years ago, sometime between September and November of 2019. My girlfriend, we'll call her Mary, and I drove up to Berkeley, California for the weekend, my hometown. I now live in Los Angeles. We went there to see some of my old friends. The day we arrived, we went straight to my oldest friend, we'll call him Paul's, dad's house, where my family spent every Christmas and Thanksgiving my whole childhood. His family is quite well off and has a large property at the top of Berkeley Hills with a full panoramic view of the Bay Area, Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco skyline, etc. It's a pretty breathtaking view. It was probably about three or four in the afternoon as the sun was starting to dip but not yet setting. The three of us were sitting on his deck in the backyard, catching up, about to get in the hot tub with this gorgeous view. Now, for the sake of what happens next, I feel like I should describe the seating arrangement. I was sitting on a bench perpendicular to the bay, with Mary sitting to my right. I was facing Paul, who was sitting on a bench perpendicular to mine. We were just telling stories, making jokes, and laughing quite a bit, when out of nowhere, a rapid black rip sped between where Paul and I were sitting, making a loud tearing sound and vanished from view as quickly as it had appeared. Initially, I thought I had hallucinated it, until realizing that Paul and Mary were equally stunned and shocked by what I had just seen. All of us were like, what the hell was that? And it became immediately clear that it was no hallucination, especially since we all quickly agreed on its description. Whatever it was, was long and black, I had thought for a moment that it was the largest bird I'd ever seen, but its speed was unlike anything I've ever witnessed. It was just rapid. We all looked in the direction that it seemed to be headed, but there was nothing where it should have been, despite being able to see for miles. It was present for what felt like a millisecond, blink and you'd have missed it. We discussed it, each of us as bewildered as the next, and agreed that maybe it was like a hole in a pair of jeans ripping wide open. We all decided that it felt like a rip had sped between us and closed as soon as it had opened. There was no follow-up or evidence of the phenomenon except for the certainty that we had all seen it happen. I don't know what this was, and I've never had any similar experiences, but to this day, the three of us all remember it vividly. I don't know if it was a rip in the matrix or what, but I'd love to hear thoughts of what this could have been. Has anyone else ever had a similar experience? I don't know if this would be a glitch, but I sure as hell don't have any other way to describe how or why this happened. My best friend and I are driving down this windy road in our town that has a speed limit of 45 miles per hour. We have the windows down, the music up, and we're just talking and laughing, all the usual things. I believe we were on our way to a mutual friend's birthday party. On this one specific part of the road, there's a relatively sharp turn that bends around a guardrail. If you were to drive through the guardrail, you would plummet a great distance before hitting the shallow river below. Mind you, I have been on this road countless times, and I have never been paranoid or imagined anything specific about this turn. It was just one of many places on this particular road 
that you had to slow down a good bit before continuing your way around. Nothing major. We start to approach the turn, and while in the middle of a discussion about some drama going on at the party we were on our way to, we both grab the sides of the seats, her one hand remaining on the steering wheel. At the exact same time, in the middle of a conversation that had nothing to do with the road. We weren't speeding, there were no cars around us at all. It was just a peaceful drive, not unlike any we've had previously or since. We glanced at each other with big eyes and pulled onto the side of the road after making it around the turn. After stopping, we immediately bring up the exact thing that we both pictured in our heads at the same exact time. She loses control of the wheel, which results in us smashing the guardrail and plummeting over the edge directly into the water. We both felt the same sensation of not being able to breathe correctly until we pulled the car onto the side of the road. And we felt a tingling sensation in the back of our head, a weird buzz in our ears. We both experienced the same exact thing at the same exact time, never happened to us before or since. It was, to say the least, extremely bizarre. I don't think I'll ever be able to make any sense of this experience, and I was on edge the entire night after this. I would love to hear any ideas on how or why this occurred. Several months ago, I lost the last pair of glasses I had. I remember the last place that I had them, which was my friend's car, on my knee. I have to take them off in order to see my phone. I couldn't find them after I got home. I tore my house upside down looking for them. I even looked in the driveway, thinking that maybe I still had them on my knee when I got out of my car. I called my friend to look in his car but nothing. They had just vanished. Fast forward to last week, my husband and I do yard work for an elderly man, and we haven't been to his place to work in close to a year. He was out of state during that time, dealing with trying to sell a house out there. Anyway, we went to do his yard work last week, and my husband was taking and pulling weeds in one of the flower beds. He yells for me to come and take a look at something. I get to where he is and he's holding in his hands my glasses. He had just uncovered them buried in a flower bed. There's no possible way for them to have gotten there, much less to be buried under the dirt. I've been so shook over this and I would love to hear any ideas on how this could have happened. We're pretty sure it's some kind of glitch in the matrix, but dang, it was super weird. When I was in my 20s, my then wife and I were standing outside a bakery waiting for it to open. There was also a family behind us in line, a father, a mother, a young boy, and a girl who was a little older. I remember the little boy because I thought it was odd that he was playing on the rounded metal railings on the opposite side of us, just climbing and hanging off of it like little kids do. The boy had brown hair and an oversized winter coat on. Nothing was said between my wife and I, and when the bakery opened, we went in, and so did the family. Except, there was no boy. I figured he was roaming an aisle or something, like kids do. So we check out and so does the family, but still, no boy in sight. We walk out and get into the car, and notice the family leaving with just the daughter. I wasn't really thinking too much about it, until my wife says to me, Where's the little boy? That's when I was a little shocked. We discussed the boy and what he looked like and how he was dressed, and we also talked about what he was doing on the railings while we waited. But there wasn't a boy anymore. This is a little bakery off a highway with no other stores around and no houses. The parking lot is also small, 
and in plain view of the only entrance and exit door. We were both a little spooked, and were not entirely sure if it was a ghost or some kind of glitch in the Matrix. Like, maybe we were seeing two different timelines or a parallel universe or something. But in any case, that boy just glitched out of existence. My wife and daughter had the same glitch experience at the grocery store earlier today. She said that she and my daughter were walking, looking at something in an aisle. They were looking for something, and they thought they were on the right aisle, but then they realized it was over in the next aisle. So they turned the corner and started walking down that one, but realized that they were actually on the aisle they had just left, from the beginning. Not like they had turned around, but like they had made a full circle even though they hadn't. They noticed right away, so they turned around to check the aisle they had just left to confirm what had happened, and it was a completely different aisle they'd never even been on. After that, we were eating lunch. She looked over at our son and said that he just looked different, as though he had aged since she'd seen him last. This change that she has noticed in our son only seemed to happen after this weird glitch. Is it possible that my wife just shifted realities? If so, what happened to my original wife? She seems exactly the same. We can't really figure out what just happened. Approximately five years ago, one of my co-workers, an 18-year-old woman at my job, didn't show up for her shift one day. The next time we worked together, I asked why she had called out the other day. We just so happened to be in the presence of one of our supervisors, and we were all standing close to the entrance. She told us that her house had flooded because her younger brother left the faucet running right before her family went out to dinner. They came back to the house being mildly flooded. Unfortunate, but not too crazy of a story. The next day at work, the same coworker and same supervisor were standing in the exact same spot as the day prior, close to the entrance, and were talking. I asked my coworker how her house and family were doing. She asked me what I was talking about and why I would ask her that. I said, you know, because of your house flooding. She became very visibly upset and bothered and demanded to know how I knew that her house had flooded. I became very confused. I asked her, don't you remember telling me that literally just yesterday? She insisted that she didn't tell me about her house flooding and demanded to know how I found out this information. I was bewildered and I was convinced she must be messing with me because she 100% told me and our supervisor about her house flooding. I turned to our supervisor and I'm like, did she not tell us about her house flooding yesterday? Expecting an obvious yes in response. However, our supervisor said she had no idea that her house had flooded either, and it was the first time she was hearing about it. I was stunned almost into silence, and I'm incoherently babbling, trying to explain that she definitely did tell us this. My coworker cuts me off and says, there's absolutely no way you could have known about that. I haven't told anyone about my house flooding aside from our general manager. Not even, and inserted the name of another coworker who she was really close with. She said, if I haven't even told her about that, why the F would I tell you? She literally looked at me with disgust and stormed off. At this point, I'm still convinced that it was some kind of elaborate prank. I asked the supervisor who had witnessed it before about the whole thing again, and she still maintained that she was unaware about her house flooding. This disturbed me greatly, but it's just so freaking insane that I was still convinced they had to be messing with me. The next time I worked with flooded house coworker, I said hello to her, and she just glared at me in response and walked off. 
after that day, it was never the same. We worked together for another six months or so, and she continued to avoid me. If we had to interact, she was rude to me and treated me like I was some kind of creepy stalker that was obsessed with her. I swear on my life that she told me about her house flooding. I remember it very vividly, but her reaction to me knowing was so intense and so prolonged. I really don't think she was faking that. My supervisor also maintained that she never actually told us about it. I even talked to her best friend about it, who also said that she had not previously known about the house flooding. Her best friend told me that it was best to just leave the topic alone and to leave flooded house girl alone. I have no explanation for this. And when I tell people about the situation, they either tell me I'm crazy or making it up. I don't know how to explain it. I don't even believe in parallel universes, but I don't know what else it could be other than a switch up in the timelines or something. I don't know. It haunts me though. I think about it all the time and it just makes me feel sick. About 25 years ago, I lived in Texas. Most of my family lived in Utah. My sister called me one afternoon and told me that my niece and her three-year-old daughter were in an accident, but had to be in two different hospitals. The three-year-old, Court, was at a children's hospital. You have to remember, there were no cell phones back then. My sister told me that they were fixing to do surgery on Court for a blood lump behind her eye. My sis was with her as her mom was having surgery at the other hospital. My sis asked me to pray for them both. I was laying on my bed praying, but when I prayed for court, it felt like I was in her room and I put my hand on her head while I prayed for her. Jump forward two years and my family went to Utah for a family reunion. One of the days that I was there, my sister asked if I wanted to see pictures of court in the hospital, and I did. The sister said that a weird thing happened. Court was sleeping, so sister went to get snacks out of the machine. When she got back to the room, Court was awake. Remember, she was only three. Court asked my sister where Aunt Deb was. That'd be me. She said that I was in Texas. Court said, no, she was in here. She put her hand on my head and she was talking. So, yeah, I guess I really was with her. I don't know if that's some sort of glitch in the matrix sort of thing, but it certainly was memorable. So I always thought this was strange. I even told people about it but chalked it up to people working overnight or something. But now, I'm not so sure. I worked for one of the biggest tech companies for about 10 years. I traveled a lot and sometimes taught workshops. I remember visiting Puerto Rico to deliver a workshop. I was really impressed with the people in the office. They were serving lunch on silver dishes and had a really classy atmosphere it was a company location, so there were no customers in the office. One strange thing that happened, but not necessarily weird, was after eating lunch with the students, I'd started teaching again. And little by little, the office people would just casually walk in, right past the projector and me lecturing and grab lunch. I wasn't mad, I actually found it kind of funny. Besides, the staff had some good looking and generally nice people, so there's that too. The strange part was that I remember after one class cleaning up for the night and visiting the bathroom before leaving, and I noticed that it was a bit aged. Maybe leaking faucets and water stains, nothing gross, but it was definitely an old bathroom. There were several stalls and urinals. Now, I left likely at around five o'clock and the office was closing down. The next day when I visited that bathroom, it was completely different and looked brand spanking new. 
I'm talking marble, tile, everything looked like it had literally been done overnight. I remember mentioning this and really getting no response from anybody. That night was when the oil refinery blew up. I booked my flight a day early and got out. I was afraid that it was either an attack or the smoke would force the airport to be closed down, which would cause havoc with me trying to get home. I never did figure out what was going on there with that bathroom or with the people. Looking back on it, maybe they weren't real either. Or maybe it was some kind of glitch. I've mentioned this a few times to people over the years as a funny story, thinking that they had actually remodeled this bathroom overnight. But now that I think of it, there's no possible way that they did that. I was leaving when the office was getting ready to close. There were no signs, no workers coming in, and no recollection of the employees the next day. Plus, this work wasn't just a makeover. Like I said, it was granite counters, tile walls, the works. It was just very strange. I am a 26-year-old female, and my boyfriend is a 26-year-old male. One day, we went for a big walk around the town that we were living in at the time. It was the middle of the day, probably around 2 p.m., and we were both completely sober. At one point, we were on the side of the road, on one of those lanes where people run and walk, and we saw a female child, around 12 years old if I had to guess, jogging. She was in our lane and coming our way. I remember finding it strange for this child to be out jogging on her own. There was no one else around, and it was a pretty remote area, like a countryside road. But I didn't mention anything to my boyfriend. We were walking side by side, so I walked behind him so that she could pass. I stopped seeing her for a few seconds, but when I saw her again next to me, she was a fully grown woman in her mid-forties. He immediately looks at me before I can say anything in total shock and asks, did you see that? I asked him, did he also see a child turn into a woman? And he said, yeah. He said that she never really left his sight, but as he blinked and looked again, she was no longer a child. We even looked back to confirm and she was still the mid forties woman. Since then I've been noticing other smaller glitches. I don't know if they were always there and I just didn't pay attention or if that started a whole chain of events. Either way, it was odd. My husband wrote his perspective about me shifting realities after some grocery store incident with my daughter. I wanted to share the story from my point of view. I was in the grocery store with my daughter doing some shopping. We were down the canned chili aisle. While walking by the chili to the left, I mentioned to my daughter that it was too bad that no one in the house liked chili dogs. She replied with, yuck mom, hot dogs are gross. I said, okay, well we do need some canned corn. So I looked above the aisle to read the signs above all the aisles that I could see and I noticed the canned vegetables were on the next aisle, to the right. So we walked, got to the end of the aisle, and turned right. Before we turned the corner to the aisle on the right, I looked down it and saw the chili to the left. I stopped and said to my daughter, Hey, weren't we just down the chili aisle? My daughter said, Whoa, Mom, we were. But now we're standing outside the two aisles looking back and forth between both of them. I looked to the one on the right, the one that we had just been down, and I saw baking goods like flour and stuff like that. We both kind of tripped out a little and laughed about it, chalking it up to just being confused. I'm open-minded, but this definitely couldn't be possible. We wrapped up our shopping and came home. Fast forward to dinner time, minus a few details. The long story short is that I noticed my son's features looking slightly different to me. I kept saying how he just looked slightly older. Kind of like when you send your kid to camp for a week and when you see them, you notice how they aged just a wee bit from the last time you saw them. 
I asked my husband if he thought it was possible for a person to notice the moment of the slightest change of aging in a child. We're pretty open-minded in our house, and we like to entertain conversations that don't always fall in line with society's standards. It's fun, and we like to think for ourselves. At some point, a while later, my daughter said, Hey, Mom, tell them about what happened at the store. I told the story, and my husband, being his lovable weird self, said, I think you experienced a glitch in the Matrix. Maybe my old wife is gone, and that's why our son looks different. I laughed it off because I always like to see the rational side of things and also thought he was mostly joking. So he posted about it. I have no idea what really happened at that store. Had my daughter not been there to experience it with me, I might actually believe that I in fact do have some kind of mental illness, like so many of the commenters seem to think. I'm also a firm believer that that's how most of society is brainwashed to think. Oh, this is weird, someone's losing their mind, give them meds. Over the past five years, I've been on a journey of loosening the grip that society's conditioning has had on me and trying to unlearn most of the things from my upbringings. I'm trying to learn to think for myself and also to realize that my life may not be what it seems to the next person. Perception is everything and experiences are different depending on who's experiencing them and how they vary. I'm not saying that I shifted realities. I'm also not saying that I'm insane. There is no black and white. There's only what I experienced, and nobody will see things the way I do. Maybe I will never truly know what happened, and that's part of life. Nothing has to have an answer. Not every situation out of the cookie-cutter life experience has to be labeled as crazy. My challenge to all the skeptics ready to deem me insane is that nothing is what it seems. Have an open mind. The next time you judge a person based on a story, try to think of all the times someone was trying to judge you based on a situation that you saw completely differently. Does that make you insane? Like I said, I would definitely have seen a doctor had it not been for the fact that my daughter and I experienced the exact same thing. Anyway, that's my perspective of what happened that day. I may never be able to explain it, and that's okay. The last hour of my life has been really surreal for me. So I got off work just a little while ago, and I ended up on Instagram, just kind of browsing the reels. I do this every now and then, just for filler, and it almost felt like my hands were just leading the way. Well, I ended up on this video of some girl, and I liked her style, so I went to her page. I was just watching a few of her videos. For whatever reason, because I never do this, I clicked the comments, and I ended up clicking on the first commenter's profile. As soon as I do, I see the pictures of this person. I look up at the name. This profile belongs to a long-lost friend of mine that I went to elementary school with. I went to school in a very small town. My sixth grade class had fewer than 10 students. I haven't used Facebook in over six years, and even my Instagram doesn't have my real name attached to it. But when I found their profile, I instantly added them and sent them a message. We had no mutual friends, and they actually lived in another state, and had for the last 10 years or so. We messaged back and forth, and I found out that they had been having a hard time recently, but that they were trying to stay positive. I also found out that we both had similar outlooks, and we agreed that we were supposed to find each other again. I plan on calling them again this weekend to catch up more thoroughly, but holy crap, what a beautiful thing. Still, it seems like more than a coincidence. I don't know if it's a glitch in the matrix or something like that, but it was wild. Let me preface this story by saying that when this happened to me, I, a 33-year-old male, was barely 16 and was as much of a skeptic or a believer as any kid at that age could be. I'd had other unexplained incidents before this, 
but this is the one that really stuck with me most of all. I went to bed in my very boring, very normal mid-2000s bedroom. I played a little Nintendo DS, later than I should have on a school night, I'll admit, then slept for maybe an hour or two before waking up in desperate need to use the bathroom. I roll out of bed, not bothering to grab my glasses. My first mistake, as someone who's literally legally blind without them probably should get them. And I take the muscle memory four steps diagonally across my tiled bedroom floor. I am a very tactile person due to my visual impairment. And I had my whole house, not only my room, memorized to a T for safety. I reached for my doorknob and I get nothing. Okay, so maybe I'm not quite as awake as I thought. This never happens to me though. I wake up if one of my parents so much as breathes wrong across the damn house, but okay, I guess I'm groggy. I reach to the left since I must have angled my walk wrong. Nothing. I try right. Nothing. Did I not walk far enough? I feel really awake now. I take another step, regretting the no glasses choice. I can barely make out shapes in the daytime, and darkness is just a blanket over my eyes, so I can't see my door, or my bed, or my own hands in front of me. I can't see, period. But the door should be there. So where is it? I take another step. Two. Three. Four. I flail my arms forward, silently pleading, please let my door be there. And I swear I can see the nightlight in the hallway that's there so that I won't eat carpet on my way to the bathroom. Thanks, Mom. But no matter where I reach or how far I go, I can't get close enough. My memory gets hazy here, but after maybe two solid minutes of aimless walking toward the hazy outline of light around a door, my last thought from that between time was feeling that I was not at home. Then I'm in the hallway and I sleep on the couch the rest of the night. Looking into my room felt like staring into an abyss. Nothing ever came of it, but I don't know if anything will ever get under my skin the way this did. I felt so unsafe, so helpless and alien in that space that I had known so well. Wherever it was, it was not my room. Once a week for the past two years, I've walked to and from a supermarket. On the way, I walk down a long road which has houses on one side and a whole lot of nothing on the other, except for the remains of a little store that sold newspapers and daily essentials. For the past two years, I've passed these remains and recalled the time, around six years ago, that my friend and I were passing the store, but we had to take shelter there when the heavens suddenly opened and a heavy storm started. It made me feel a little melancholic to look at the remains, thinking of happier times and so on. What used to be a store that happily served its local community was now barely three partially knocked down walls and a pile of rubble. Last week, it was the three walls and a pile of rubble. Today, to my utter astonishment, it's the same store as it was six years ago. I couldn't really say what it looked like in between then and the past two years, as I only moved back to the area two years ago. Kind of run down and old looking, but certainly not a pile of rubble. I can't be sure, but I believe it's the same two old men running it, who called my friend and I a cab that day when we were caught in a storm. Three weeks ago rubble, today just like it was years ago? I'm pretty sure this is some kind of glitch in the matrix but it's my first experience since childhood that I would describe as supernatural. This happened when I was 16. My mother used to take my phone at night and then give it back to me when she woke me up for school the following morning. 
every morning started the same. She would wake me up, I would go to the bathroom to take a shower and get ready, I'd come out and put on my uniform, she'd give me breakfast, and then I would run out of the house to catch the public bus. This is the important part. I would always take my phone into the bathroom with me. I'm the type of person who plans my day by the minutes. I knew I had to take my shower for X amount of minutes, get out of the bathroom by X, leave the house at X, etc. So the same routine. I was in the bathroom and I remember it so clearly. My shower took way longer than usual. And instead of it being 7.15 when I got out, the phone said 7.23. I remember rushing out of the bathroom as I was supposed to leave the house by 7.25 on most days. I rushed and put on my uniform and my mom followed me half out of the house with my breakfast. I distinctly remember checking the clock before I left too, trying to figure out if I had time to catch the bus or if I would have to take a car to school. The clock was at 7.28 so I did have time to catch the bus. It was a snowy day in January, I also remember that vividly. The sky was gray and dark, but that's how it was every day. The streets were eerily empty. I stood at my bus stop, which was on the side of a pretty busy street. Not today. No one was on the street. Maybe one car passed by every few minutes. I started to get worried that I would be late for school. And that's when I looked down at my phone to call my dad to see if he could drop me off. It was 4.03 in the morning. I was shocked. It couldn't be. I walked back home and my mom was still up getting my other sister ready for school. She was surprised to see me. I told her to check the time and to her surprise too, it was four o'clock in the morning. She started saying how she had sworn that her alarm woke her up at seven, like it does every single morning. We both looked at each other and just swore that we'd seen the time. A 4 a.m. snowy day and a 7 a.m. snowy day looked almost identical outside. But I know that I checked the clock enough times to confirm that it was in the 7 o'clock hour. Regardless, we all went back to sleep, and again I woke up at 7. This time I made my dad take me to school, and the whole day I had my eyes on the clock. This incident never happened to me again, but I still have no explanation for it. I just got home from work an hour ago. I have these dreams every night where this Japanese girl is always riding shotgun in my dream car, which is a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner. The dreams have been getting a little too realistic for my taste. For example, she has a whole name, first, middle, and last. Either way, the dreams almost always consist of she and I just driving around and laughing at some dumb jokes. Well, tonight on my way home, I decided to glance over to the passenger side mirror and she's just sitting there. Same hair, same clothes. It was her. I'm not sure why, but I wasn't really unnerved by it in any way. That is, until she looked over to me and smiled. I smiled back and she was gone. Poof, she just vanished as if she was never there. Hell, the seatbelt was even undone. I'm honestly not sure how to feel about this. I'm guessing that in another reality or universe, I'm dating the girl of my dreams, and maybe there was some kind of overlap. I guess dreams could be realities. Maybe they're alternate realities. But could there be an actual meaning behind all of this? I still can't figure it out. What's even weirder is that I did some Googling about her name and I can't find anybody that exists with those names put together, first, middle, and last. I have no idea what's going on. A couple of years ago, I experienced a moment straight out of the Truman Show. 
I was skiing on Whistler Mountain with my family. I'm a fast skier, so I usually will zip down the mountain and then wait for my dad to catch up with my phone in hand in case he needs to reach me. One run, I stopped about halfway down the mountain to wait for him to catch up and received a phone call from my dad. When I picked up, he didn't answer. Instead, I heard what sounded like radio chatter. I couldn't make out exactly what was being said, except for one thing. We lost him. Wait, wait, he stopped by the tree. Then the line went dead and my dad came skiing down. Not only was he not on his phone, but his phone was dead. I told my family about this and even had the phone call record in my recent phone calls as evidence that I had at least received a call when I claimed I did. What was especially strange is that my younger brother had a memory of the event as well. He said that I had skied to the bottom of the mountain where he was eating lunch and that I had received the call in front of him, but I didn't. He also told me the next morning that he had a nightmare that men in suits were standing all around his bed, telling him to forget what he had seen and that, quote, he could never know the truth he being me. He could have easily been messing with me, sure, but he seemed really shaken up at the time, like genuinely scared, and he's still fascinated by the events whenever I bring them up today. When this happened, it completely shattered my worldview about reality. I still find myself questioning what's real. It was a very strange event. I feel like I was never supposed to experience it. Like I said, it eerily reminds me of that scene in the Truman Show where his car radio is playing security radio chatter of them following him. I don't know what to make of it, but it was really, really strange. This is a glitch that I have thought about a lot over the years. I have no explanation. It was just a weird thing that happened. It was 2011 and we were 16. My best friend and I were in town wanting to get some McDonald's. Her car declined, so we were walking to the bank opposite the mall. While we were crossing the road, we saw her older brother's best friend, Mark. We both yelled out, hello, Mark. I yelled out, nice shirt. It was a lion with flames all around it. I remember very well because I had a huge crush on him at the time. He ignored us completely, like he didn't even hear us. We both commented about how rude that was, finished crossing the road and got to the ATM on the other side. While there, Mark comes along from the opposite direction. He's wearing the same shirt and we ask him how he got there, that we had just seen him cross the road and the light hadn't gone again, so he couldn't have crossed again. He's very confused and said that he just came from the opposite direction and had never crossed the road yet. I mentioned this to my best friend a week ago and she remembers the same thing that I do. Neither of us have any idea what happened. Something happened to me yesterday and I still can't process it. It's driving me crazy. I always come home at 11 p.m. after going out with my friends. Before I forget to mention, I live alone in a quiet neighborhood next to a park. Yesterday, before I went home, I was taking a walk, listening to some music in the park. There were a few people there and there were several people in front of me. As I'm walking, suddenly everything paused for four minutes. I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought it was some kind of prank, but when I turned, nobody was moving, even flinching. And it was so cold. It gave me a really creepy vibe. It's like I was in a different universe or something glitched in the matrix. 
My phone wasn't working, and neither was my watch. Then, everything went normal again. I have no idea what happened. I tried to talk to a friend, but he didn't believe me. I mean, why would I even lie about something that sounds so crazy? Is there any explanation for this? This happened yesterday, and I can't stop thinking about it. My boyfriend wasn't home, and I had put my phone on charge behind the couch. I sat down and started reading. About 10 minutes later, I heard my boyfriend shout, Baby! And I sat up, startled. He sometimes does this when he comes home just to make me aware of his presence before he comes into the room, because I always jump if I don't hear him come in. I sat for a second because I couldn't hear any movement, then turned around to get off the couch and go see him and see what he was doing. As I got up, my phone lit up, and it was a text message from him, literally just a few seconds after I'd heard him call me. I thought nothing of it until I opened the living room door and he wasn't standing in the hallway. I checked my phone and he'd actually texted me something pretty urgent and it made me even more freaked out that I had heard him shout so clearly. It felt like in some weird way, whatever it was was trying to get my attention to turn around and get my phone. 